It's 2021 and it's still locked down here in the UK, which means that I've rewatched The Office so many times by this point that I don't even know if I find it funny anymore. But all this time inside has also given me an opportunity to reflect on the fact that I have now been vegan for six years, which if I could go back in time seven years and tell myself was going to happen, myself would have responded. Me? A vegan? Never. There's no way I'm never eating a steak again, or halloumi. Now stop forcing your views, you protein-deficient, time-traveling hippie tree-hugger. Except little did I know seven years ago, but the seeds had already begun to be planted in my mind. The story starts in 2006. Twelve-year-old me is sat around the dinner table with my family eating beef casserole, a family favorite, and we decide to tell the same joke that we often do. What's the best thing about having a vegetarian around for dinner? My stepdad asks. More meat for us, I reply. So far, so normal. Except I then proceed to bite into a chunk of beef, and I'm repulsed to feel something chewy. I look at the chunk on my fork and see a vein running through it. I feel my stomach flip and my body tense as I realize that I'm not eating beef. I'm eating a cow. Not long after, I'm in an English literature class, talking about the book that we're currently studying, which features a vegetarian character. My teacher asks the classroom, what do you think about being vegetarian? And I put my hand up and say, all vegetarians are pale, weak, and skinny. The class goes really quiet, and I turn to look at a vegetarian girl sitting behind me. She looks at me with a mixture of anger and disbelief, which shocks and confuses me. I fought back to our family jokes about vegetarians around the dinner table and felt conflicted. Was being a vegetarian not a weird thing? When I was 18, I left home and started university where I met my girlfriend who I'm still with to this day. For one of our first dates, we went to go and see Jaws together at the cinema and we both bonded over our love of movies about sharks and whales. So later in 2013, when we saw a new documentary about whale captivity at SeaWorld called Blackfish was showing in London, we were quick to book tickets. However, not because we cared about marine animal captivity, but because we presumed a documentary about a whale killing humans would be scary to watch. The documentary was horrifying but not for the reasons that we expected. We left the cinema and began talking about how sickened and distressed we were by what was happening to these animals. And we decided right there and then that we needed to do something about it. We went home and searched online for how we could help and came across a protest against the captivity of dolphins and whales that was taking place in London. So we painted placards and went to join in. We felt empowered and engaged in conversations with the public, handed out flyers, and took part in this small march through the city. And after our afternoon of standing up for the rights of animals, we then ate a congratulatory meal of squid and chicken at Wagamama's. It was around this time that I had also found myself in an unhealthy obsession with KFC, eating it every week, often twice, as I made my way through my university essays. My trips to KFC became a pilgrimage that went far beyond just enjoying the foods, but actually became a part of my identity. Towered up burgers, sharing buckets, just to myself, I was a KFC fanatic. And that was the way it remained, until that is, the 14th of May, 2014. A day I'll never forget. I was scrolling the BBC online when the headline, hundreds of chickens killed in M62 lorry crash, grabbed my attention. I clicked on the article and was stunned to read that 1,500 chickens had been killed in a truck crash, with many of those chickens being killed from being run over by cars as they wandered out into the road, confused by what had just happened. As well as those who had died, there were hundreds more chickens with broken bones and wings, their bodies crushed and twisted. I thought to myself about how much pain these animals must be in, and about how much they must have been suffering. And then it dawned on me. The animals I eat have the capacity to suffer, and therefore they wish to live a life free from suffering. My mind went to my fridge, inside which was a leftover KFC from my dinner the previous night. And so I faced an ultimatum. Do I continue living in a way that causes suffering to animals and takes their life from them needlessly? Or do I live in alignment with the values of being against animal cruelty and unnecessary suffering that I said I had? I opted for the latter, and my girlfriend and I both became vegetarian. But to tell the truth, 
I was a vegetarian who thought vegans were weird, crazy extremists who took everything too far. Not to mention they were forceful, preachy, and self-righteous. Why do vegans have to be this way? I would exclaim. After all, I'm a vegetarian, and you don't hear me going on about it. However, that all changed when I watched the documentary Earthlings, a film that uses undercover footage to objectively show the reality of what happens to animals for food, including dairy and eggs, as well as clothing, testing, and entertainment. I didn't want to watch the documentary, but my girlfriend was insistent that we should watch it after seeing an Instagram post about it. I told her that it was propaganda and probably set up by Peter to fulfill their agenda. However, one morning, after weeks of trying to encourage me to watch it, she decided that enough was enough and she just got the laptop out and started watching it anyway, knowing that I would end up watching it too. It was so much worse than I could have ever even imagined. I was stunned. I was silent. I'd never seen anything like it before and I was completely and utterly shaken. After the film had finished, I decided to spend some time with Rupert the hamster who was the first companion animal I had ever had in my life. I was emotionally devastated after watching the film, and so I hoped that Rupert would cheer me up, as he always did whenever I was low. Rupert's favourite food was broccoli, so I gave him some to eat. As I watched Rupert eating away, I thought about how he was an individual, with his own personality, his own likes and dislikes, things that made him Rupert. I thought about Rupert in pain, or someone hurting him, and how horrible that would be. But then I realized that all the animals that are exploited on my behalf are the exact same as Rupert in every way that matters. They suffer, feel pain, have personalities, and are individuals. I realized that there was no ethical way to exploit Rupert, and there was no humane way to take his life needlessly. And so I asked myself the question, how do I morally justify pain for animals to be needlessly exploited and killed on my behalf. It was at this moment that I realized that being vegetarian wasn't enough. That what we do to animals is a moral issue that far transcends just meat and even just food. That is why I went vegan six years ago. And my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner. And I can still eat the foods that taste like fried chicken. It's just now somebody isn't being killed when I do. And contrary to what my past self would have said, I'm neither protein deficient nor a hippie but I might well end up hugging some trees out of pure relief when this pandemic's over. And just for the record, I still find The Office funny.